Good evening, everyone. Tyler's off tonight. Forget about those dog days of summer on Wall Street. The major averages just wrapped up a blowout month of August, one of the best this year, capping four straight weeks of gains despite low trading volume, struggling economies in Europe, and deepening troubles in Ukraine and the Middle East. On this final trading day of the month, the Dow added almost 19 points, the Nasdaq rose 22, and the S&P up 6.5 points, closing at a new record of 2003. And by the way, tomorrow will be the 2000th calendar day since the bull market began on March 9th of 2009. And what a month August has been for Wall Street. The Dow is up more than 3 percent. The Nasdaq posted a gain of 4.8 percent, and the S&P hired by more than 3.5 percent. Only February posted higher gains for those big indexes. So why do the markets keep rising in spite of all the headline risks? And what are investors looking forward to in September? Bob Pisani takes a look. Despite turmoil in the Mideast and Ukraine, the market remains in an uptrend. Now, why are stocks rising and what could derail the rally? First and most importantly, the market is up because of continuing low interest rates. Secondly, there's low commodity prices like oil. Third, there's a slowly improving economy. Fourth, we have record earnings. And finally, the U.S. is still the best place to put money. Next, what could derail the rally? Other than a significant global crisis, there's two red flags. First is a rapid rise in rates, like above expectation economic numbers or a change in the Fed outlook. Secondly, a significant profit margin deterioration. We're at record high profit margins right now, but higher commodity prices or higher labor costs could compress earnings. Corporations would have to raise prices then. That's very difficult right now. For now, barring a global crisis, most market watchers say the uptrend will likely continue. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Bob Bassani at the New York Stock Exchange. Patricia Edwards believes the markets will go higher through the end of the year, and she just raised her target for the S&P 500 index to 2060. She's managing director of investments at U.S. Bank Wealth Management. Uh, Patty, that's a, a pretty bullish forecast. Uh, if you're right, that would mean that the S&P 500 for the whole year of 2014 would be up 11.5 percent. What's going to drive stocks, according to your forecast? Well, we think we're in a Goldilocks uh, economy at this point. It's neither too hot nor too cold. We think that the Fed is still behind us in providing liquidity. And when you wrap all those things together, plus the earnings growth that we're seeing, which was 10.5 percent year over year, um, we're thinking that things are still going to continue to bumble along. Not, you know, off to the races, but still continue to bumble along. What do you do? How do you weigh in a headline like we saw today about that terror alert in the U.K. Uh, up against uh, some good economic news? I mean, what goes through your investment strategy when you come in in the morning? Well, you know, the headline out of the U.K. was certainly startling. But you can't plan for um, events that we just don't know are going to happen. And so you really have to look at the fundamentals underlying the market first and foremost. And if you look at the fundamentals, we're not overvalued. We do have the earnings growth. We do have strong cash on balance sheets. There's a lot of good things going on. And absent an absolute event, you know, some sort of tragic event happening, you have to keep looking at those fundamentals in mm -hmm. investing. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you pretty much agree with the package that we just had with Bob Pisani in, in terms of what could derail the ra rally, right? Yeah, we do. And, you know, our target of 2060 is just through the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Right about this time of year, as everyone's coming back from the Hamptons, you start to look out toward the end of 2015, and that gives us even a little bit more wind in our sails, we Well, think. let's talk about an even more near-term uh, event on the calendar, September. I mean, people coming back and looking at their portfolios, and we know that historically September has been a very nasty month for the markets. So many people have been calling for a, a correction. Do you see, uh, like, a 10 percent correction or more? Or in the month of September? How feasible is that? You know, anything can happen. And so we would not want to go on record and say there's absolutely no way. But that being said, you know, once again, it's the fundamentals. It's looking at um, the market loving to climb a wall of worry. People have been calling for a 10 percent correction for a lot of days now, and it hasn't happened yet. We think that you could actually go in and buy, buy any of the dips, and we think that consumers will continue to do that. There's not a lot of money flowing into equity mutual mm -hmm. funds. You know, we're not near a blow-off top, and we're only trading at 17 times this year's earnings. 
Um, that's very normal given the amount of cash that are, is on the balance sheets. Also next week, we have a, a lot of fresh economic data, including the jobs report. Uh, European central bankers are meeting on, on Thursday. Um, we're going to have a lot of new information for investors to review. How will all of that play out in the market? Well, certainly the, the numbers on employment are absolutely crucial, and we would like to see that number continue to be above 200,000 new jobs being added. That being said, what's going to push the consumer to spend more is not going to be new jobs. It's going to be greater income. And so that requires the economy to actually be picking up and requires more than just new jobs. It requires better jobs. All right. Patty, thank you so much for coming on the program. Have a great weekend. Patricia Edwards at U.S. Bank Wealth Management.